We are here for Spartan Up Podcast. We've got Seth from my left, we've got Dr. Johnny, and we've got a stand-in for Colonel Nye, David DeLuca, our philosopher, who definitely poses some questions that we can't answer at times. Oh, and Marion, the communist. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to interview Peter Phillips here. You're going to love it. Peter, for those of you that don't know, is the first cousin of uh, William and Harry, um, the son of, of Anne, Charles's uh, sister, royal family. Can't even believe that I had the opportunity to stand with royal family. We didn't sit. And um, I think it's going to blow you guys away. I think, I think it's a real introspective into what somebody like this, um, how he thinks. We are here for Spartan Up Podcast. We're at the Telegraph. Uh, where are we? Business of Sports Conference in the UK. Yes. And I am with Peter Phillips, the eldest grandchild of the Queen. So we are with royalty. Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, with this podcast, we're trying to always dig down and find out what makes somebody successful. Mm -hmm. Could be a monk, could be a business person, could be a mom, um, somebody that just gets it done in life. And um, we've done a ton of interviews. And what we typically find is uh, people that learn to bootstrap, you know, pick themselves up from the gutter and, and, and just got it together and were relentless. In your situation, it's very interesting to me because um, you've come from a pretty privileged background. And so you would think, intuition would say, that coming from a privileged background, you haven't had to fight your way forward. So it makes it more difficult necessarily to make, make your own way. I don't know, what are your thoughts on that? Or, well, I, I think there's, there's a couple of things there. I think, um, <clears throat> first and foremost, we were always, my parents instilled in both myself and my sister that, that we were never going to get anything handed to us on a plane. Uh, yes, we were incredibly lucky, incredibly privileged, grew up in a fantastic place. Um, but actually, if you wanted to make a success of yourselves, you had to go out and do it yourself. Um, so I think that's probably, first of all, that's been drilled into us right from the, right the get-go. Um, and... And I think also during, during you know, I went to a school where it wasn't, it was about everything. I went to Gordonson, you know, it's, it's not just about the education, it's about the whole person, it's about community service, it's about, it's, it's about, it, it, it's about mucking in together to be able to deliver a, a bigger thing. Um, I think it's a combination of the fact that, you know, I'm, you know, the sport I loved and the sport I played to a reasonable level was rugby. It's all about team. It's all it's about tough, mucking. That's, that's, it's a all, tough, that's a tough sport. <laughs> yeah, but it's all about mucking in together. You know, right. if you if your if your mates on the floor and he's getting getting beaten up, then you pile in. And likewise, if it happened to me a few times, people used to pick on me because of who I am. All my mates used to muck in and and and, and sort of fight for me. So th I've always been in that team ethos. I've always had that mentality that you know, yeah. You've got to go out and earn it. Again, rugby is a, sports. Sports a very good, good example of that. You know, you're not going to win anything just by turning up. You've got to go out and you've got to train hard. You've got to work hard. You've got to improve your skills. You've got to improve yourself as a person to be able to actually actually go out and win something. So it's it's for, for me. Oh, and the other thing is, I don't like being told no. I'm really bad. If someone says no, you can't do that. I always try and find. There's got to be a way. There's always a way to do something. Make it work. Um, there's a way to make it work in some way or another. You might fail at it a couple of times, but that nagging feeling in the back of your head, that, no, no, someone told me no. I know we can make it this happen. And so just trying to find that problem solving, trying to find that route to, to actually make it happen. There are so many people that are, um, I call it linear thinkers, right, where no would stop you. Yeah. As opposed to a lateral thinker. You go around it, you figure out a way. And... and um, it seems simple, but it's actually a pretty amazing skill. Well, it's, it's, it, it, uh, some people call me stubborn. I'm, I'm, I would debate that to a certain extent. But I think um, if you believe in something, if you, you know, I've done a number of projects in the business world um, uh, that, that no one's done. So we put on a horse show right in the center of London. And no one said, oh, you can't do it, you can't do it, can't be done, this, that, and the other. Well, I went out, found the right partner, when got the right permissions and we put it on and it was huge it was massive it was a huge success it was fantastic and that was just like yeah they told us it couldn't be done but well we, i would we, imagine we going to the, going to the moon was probably a no well, at one point someone <laughs> would have said that yeah right? yeah so it is amazing what you can do um what are the attributes you think that make 
somebody is it just that that ability to push through when everybody's saying no what what are the things that um in your experience again you've had an amazing education you've been around very intelligent people what is it I, it's it's the ability to i think it's a couple of things the thing is the first thing is the ability to think on your feet and then i, I you touched on it earlier i think it's then that lateral thinking it's like, well, okay, how do we, how do we make this work? What's going, if we do it a certain way, what are the potential outcomes? If we, go, if we go, around, go around things or go under them or over them, how's that, what's that going to What's that going to what like? look like? And it's, it, it may not, your final product may not look like what you set out to, for it to be, but actually it's, you've done it, you've achieved it. It's, it's, it's that goal orientation. I want, th- I want this to happen. I don't care. I don't, it doesn't matter how we get there. We're going to get there. And those, these roadblocks on the way are just are just temporary, and you've got to work out a different route to get there. You think a lot of people? I'm, I'm listening to that and thinking a lot of people I find don't necessarily do risk reward analysis, right? And so when you talk about lateral thinking or thinking on your feet, it's a quick analysis. Like why wouldn't? Yeah, I do that, right? The, but, the, but there again, you don't want to do something, um, and especially the, the position that I'm in, you don't want to do something which is going to adversely affect you from a reputational standpoint yeah. or from a financial standpoint. Because if you do something that's so, so um, laterally thought of but actually has an adverse effect on your reputation or in your financial position, then, you might, then you've got to start pulling on the reins and saying, OK, that road's blocked also. How do we... We've got to look at something else. Right. Because, um, unfortunately, um, you know, the media, certainly the media in this country, in the UK, um, th- there's a microscope on every single thing that we do. And I, I say we as, 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 as a collective family. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if we're trying to, just going, trying to go out and earn an honest living. People will look at it and they'll put a microscope on it. So we, whatever we do... You have to do things right, but that doesn't mean that if you reach a reach a roadblock, that doesn't mean there are other ways of doing something. Yeah, and so you said something to me um, earlier that was really interesting: um, the analogy of the hole in the boat. Yeah. Explain that one. It was something someone told me a long time ago, but it was it was always imagine um, your business or or your project or whatever it happens to be you're working on is an ocean liner, uh, and you and. And one of the things I, I believe in passionately is a great team. As I said to you earlier, I've been a, I've been a team player my whole life. Um, and part of being able to create that great team is, is putting the right people in place and, and trusting people to be able to make decisions on behalf of you and your, uh, and your ocean liner, for want of a better expression. And someone said to me once, said, if you make a decision which is potentially going to put a hole above the water line in that liner, do you know what? It doesn't really matter. We can fix it. We can patch it back up again and all the rest of it. But if you're in the process of thinking, of, of making a decision, which, you, which could put a hole below the waterline, stop, come and have a conversation, and let's talk it through as a team to work out whether that's the right decision or whether we need to relook at it and maybe, um, maybe assess it slightly differently. That's that same risk-reward, right? You, yeah, you, absolutely. We, we could take enough risk that we're not taking in water. Yeah. Exactly, but it's also it's also about empowerment of the team, because you know, right. nobody can do. You can do what you've done, Joe. Well, you probably could actually. It's a bad example, but you couldn't have built Spartan to the, what it is today on your own. You needed a great team behind you to do it. Yeah. And and it's the same. It's the same with with anything in life. It, you can do. You can get to a certain certain place on your own, but you need those great people to be able to support you to to take it to the next level. Yeah. Somebody said recently. I don't know. I don't know who it was. I was. Uh, I don't know if I was with a psychologist or somebody said people are generally confused and they think that um, they did it on their own. But 100% of the time, there are people that helped you along the way. Uh, you'd be absolutely crazy. I, I've, I've never been in a situation where somebody, uh, except for an, in an individual athletic sport, right. I've never been in a situation where there, isn't, there aren't other people involved. Sure. I mean, even in sport, I mean, we all know it. The teams behind... The trainers, the, the trainers, nutritionists, the physios, right, right. the doctors, the, and right. all the rest of it behind, the, behind that one individual. It's, it's a huge team. You can't do things by yourself. Yeah. Why don't we take a break? You and I go horseback riding. You got a couple of horses? Yeah, sure. All right, we'll do some burpees and we'll come back. Let's just stick with the horses. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I hope you're not sitting still while you listen. If you are, you better get a burpee break in.
So the, listen, next week I'm really excited. We're going to be talking to Scott Mann, a good friend of mine, a retired uh, SF lieutenant colonel, a real uh, legend within Special Forces, a guy who kind of changed the way the policy was being done, war fighting was being done in Afghanistan by putting the safety and security of himself and American uh, SF guys in the hands of the local villagers. This guy is a real uh, badass, but he's also a r- real intellectual guy and he's got a lot to say. So yeah. uh, go ahead. Well, no, they, they talk about trackers, right, who follow tracks, and this guy's talking about leaving tracks. So if you want to follow the tracks to us, make sure you go to spartan.com slash podcast or subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, uh, wherever you watch, and get your friends to come out. And this guy's super motivational, not to be missed. Good. It's a really good one. Those horses were amazing. They're good. I, mean, they, I was they, impressed. They smell good. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, didn't realize they would even smell good. Um, Let's talk about what someone does when they're up against that wall, right? They're not feeling it. They don't have the motivation. They've had failure after failure. Uh, because we get those kinds of emails at Spartan all the time. Like, I don't, I don't know where you draw your motivation from. Where, where, do, you think, where do you think somebody could dig to and to find that? So someone, when I started, when I started my business, um, I had a couple of, couple of really good pieces of advice. And one of them was, um, again, goes back to the individual and team thing so you can't you need a group of people who you can on speed dial who you can pick up the phone and you know and and they, they'll have different skill sets um whether it be in sports or whether it be financial or whether it be a str- strategic or whatever it happens to be you can pick up the phone you can ask them a few questions and they'll give you the time to be able to say actually this is what i think this is what i do um and 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 actually, for, for, for me, I've, I'm fortunate. I've got, a, I've got a good group of what I would call advisors. Um, but also, I'm, um, my family's a huge strength to me as well. My wife um, is, is Canadian, and she's straight talking. Um, and you know what? She, you go back, we'll have sit down, have dinner, and, and, and she'll, she'll, she'll get out of me what's going on. And she'll have, because she's not involved in the business, she'll have a completely different view to yeah. how I've been I've been thinking about it so again it's it's about it's about having that team around you that that Support group, group. That, that group of supporters yeah. that will um, that you can turn to when when things are not going going great because nothing's sweetness and light the whole time um, yeah. and uh, and you need you need to be able to know that you can rely on these guys to call up and speak yeah, to that, so that's an interesting um, point as you said when you started your business you didn't need to start a business. Well, I, I, I had a number of options. Um, I could have stayed where I was. I was in the corporate world. I was before that. I was in Formula One, um, and and it was great. And I, I loved it. It was a great, t- great sport to be in. It's you know the most commercialized sport, one of the most commercialized sports in the world. Um, and I was working in the teams, and it was great. And it was, we were traveling a lot, and then went on the corporate side to run the. Um, uh, the, the global sponsorships for a big bank, that was all great. But that the bank then moved on. Um, my job became redundant. I either had to go out and find another job working for someone else, or it was let's go, let's throw roll the dice, let's just see 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 how good I am at being able to run my own business, um, see what we can pull together, and see let's make a success of it. And um, is there anything harder than running a business? Uh, not much. <laughs> much. Uh, I tell my much. wife all the time, giving birth is easy yeah. compared to running a business. Yeah. No, right? it's, uh, and it's tough. And it's, you know, I've, um, w- one piece of advice which I didn't take when we, first, um, when we first set up the business was always have a client to go in with. And, um, and we didn't really have one. Uh, and and we, so we had to sort of build our client base from, from nothing, which was, which was great. It, it caused huge amounts of stress and all the rest of it, but actually... You then get the reward when you come coming out of when it. You, when you land it. Yeah. Yeah. No. I've, I've and I've interviewed many women um, business people who have children also, and they've confirmed running a business is harder than giving birth for the women out there that are that are disagreeing with me. Um, because anything that can go wrong does go wrong. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Clients and leave you when you think they should stay. Absolutely. And and if you if you're trying to you think you've got it all under control and something from left field will come in and it will knock out, knock out two people or whatever it happens to be. And it's just, it's, it's, it's hugely frustrating. If you ever feel, start to feel comfortable, something's going to come and kick in. Yeah, which, which then goes back to, that's why you've got to build this grittiness and resiliency in life, right? Because um, 
it's never going to be smooth sailing, right. even if you're you. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Just because just because I'm me and I had a had a, I was very lucky in my upbringing. Upbringing doesn't mean that it's going to be plain sailing. And oh, okay, so a couple of clients walk out on us. What are we going to do? We're going to sulk and you know, sob and say, oh well. No, you've got to you've got to pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and get on get on with the next project. It, reinventing yourself or reinventing your business or whatever it happens to be, you know, feeling sorry for yourself is not a good trait. That's that just doesn't doesn't work. You've got it's that mentality of okay. That, bit, that chapter's closed, we move on to another one. Do you think, one of the things I've been thinking about with success in business is, um, do you think part of it has to do with the fact that you're so invested time and money that you have no choice but to succeed? In other words, if somebody gave you all the money you needed to start the business and you really didn't have that much invested, when the going gets tough, it's probably pretty easy to walk. I, I think you're 100% right. right? And, and actually, I, I think probably... The, the most successful people are is when they are invested in that business and they've got something on the line, they've got that stake sure. to, to potentially lose. And it's, um, it's we call it fear factor, it, 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 whatever it ha- happens to be. But I think, um, you know, I, I, go, I go back to, it, it's really important also to have a balance because there are people who will, will go so far down that line of putting everything into it that they forget about actually what's also important in life, which is your family. Um, and and I've got two small kids, so trying to trying to weigh up that balance between juggle that. Yeah, between putting as much as I possibly can into the business, but at the same time Spending making some sure. Time with the kids. Yeah. yeah, no, my dad was like twenty four seven, and um, you see that as a kid, and then and well, you hear it all the time, right? You can't get those years back, and so then somebody ends up spending time with the grandkids because yeah. they neglected their kids. But it's tough because a business requires 20 hours a day. Yep. So, so we've all uh, been broken. We've all been feeling awful at times. How do you pick yourself back up? Uh, well, I mean, apart from seeking solace within the family, I, it's, it's having people around. That's the big thing. And, and that can, then goes back to you know, being involved in sport. Uh, it's you know it's whether you're involved in a team game or whether you're involved in you go to a Spartan race and you're running a Spartan race as a Perfect. team. Um, uh-huh. You know it's it doesn't matter. It's it's just the fact you're doing stuff with people and 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 you've got to if you're feeling down and you surround yourself in misery you're going to stay there. But if you sur- if you get out out and about and you talk to your friends and you go and hang out with your friends and you go and play sport and you go and do, do whatever, run a Spartan race. People around you are going to be positive because they're all there to have fun and all the rest of it. And it will rub off on you. And suddenly you'll do, you'll do your activity, you'll play your game, and then you come out of it and you go, oh, whatever actually, it was wasn't so bad. Yeah, it's not that bad. Yeah. You know what? We've, I've still got my group of friends, I've still got my family, I've had a good time. And life goes on. Now pick yourself up. And if you happen to have no friends and things are going bad, just sign up for a Spartan race. You got it. Yeah. That's there's it. a whole, there's a million of them out that's there. Right, that's right. More, than, more than that. Yeah. yeah. All right. You're awesome. Cheers, man. See ya. Thanks. What a, if, if you didn't know that he was royal family, you'd never know he's royal family. Like, what a down to earth, cool. Really, down really down solid. I remember the first time I met him, his handshake was so solid. I thought, wow, I expected a soft yeah, yeah. handshake, right? But no, he's, he's a rugged guy, played rugby. Uh, obviously rides horses, plays po- the whole thing, the whole nine yards. He's got it all going on. And um, really impressive, said some great things that really had me thinking. Um, you could take a hole in a boat, just not below the waterline. It's a cool analogy. Isn't that a great analogy? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, so reputationally, they can't mess with the family. Like, he's always thinking, all right, we could do, we could, we could go out, you know, over our skis, but not to a point where we're going to risk the family name yeah, yeah. or the business we're running or, or whatever it is. Yeah. And, and I think, um, I think it, it really sets a stage in your mind for what, how far you could push, but not too far. Yeah. It, I, I was struck by the fact too, that, um, you know, we've talked to people who've come from nothing and built themselves up and how they use that to motivate themselves. And here's a guy who had, was born with a lot of advantage, but he's not resting on his laurels either. He's a guy who's saying, I was born with opportunity. I'm going to go and actually make the most of that opportunity and not selfishly either. No, he's getting it done. Dave, any uh, philosophical thoughts on uh, on Peter? Well, I always go back to the ancient Stoics. You you have some things in your control. You have some things out of your control. It doesn't matter whether you come from a back, background of privilege or not privilege. You still have things that you can do to improve the lives of others. 
Okay. You just got to find those and execute. And getting them done. Any tie-ins to um, plants or trees <laughs> or grasshoppers? Yeah, no, there's just, I mean, with influence comes responsibility. And um, Every once in a while you blow me away. Really? Nice. No. Only once in a while. <laughs> That's all right. I'll take it. I'll take it. But, um, but yeah, I mean, from the people that I've met, maybe I should have just stayed with the blow in a while. Yeah, great people, lovely. I mean, just a, a humbleness and a, and a uh, dedication to family mm-hmm. that yeah. I think is super just beautiful and important. I think we can all take that away. And... Um, do good things. Find your team. Yeah, he, he, that's what I was going to say, the yeah, find your team, because he also talks about um, uh, that it isn't just family. I mean, here's a guy who's played on uh, rugby teams. Mm-hmm. He's been part of, uh, you know, mission-based stuff where his whole thing is about um, draw strength from the people around you, give strength to the people around you, and that together we can accomplish a lot more. Sure. And uh, I, I really took a lot a lot away from that as well. And I wonder, is that rugby? Is that is that um, training from the royal family? You know, where, where does that come from? But I, th- I think it's anything. You know, we've talked to military guys who say it's that mission. We've talked sure. to business people who say that that company culture where you have to be on the same page and working as a team and then same thing with family you know when we've talked to people in survival situations um you know you look back to, to shackleton one of your favorite stories and the idea about um that they work together as a team and didn't lose a single person right so um so you can draw a team from any situation but um but again and again and again we hear that nobody's an island and that you're going to accomplish more if you do it together and um but i, I love too that it when you're part of a team it isn't just about taking from that team it's about contributing as much as you're taking and if you have say you have uh, 10 people in a situation and all 10 are committed to giving it their 100 percent at the end of the day that's more than 10 because everything leverages and compounds so um you know if, if you've got three people working together as a team it's way more than a factor of three yeah no, right one plus one plus one equals 15 yeah absolutely right. yeah don't come to joe for your math answers <laughs> charlie sorry <laughs> another great takeaway from peter exactly Phillip. but i'm oh, sorry go ahead. Yeah. another great takeaway from peter philip was uh just showing up is not going to win the battle mm-hmm. and uh you, you hear the saying 90 percent of success is showing up well there's a reason why it's 90 percent and not 100 mm-hmm. percent uh so what is that 10 percent that's not just showing up what is that what do you think? I, I, hard work? Yeah, I, I, I think <laughs> it's hard work, commitment. We like to use that word commitment, right? It's not just being interested. It's uh, seeing it through to the end. Uh-huh. You know in wrestling, right, it's one thing to take a shot. It's another thing to continue with that shot That's up right. and through. Yeah, So. Yeah, it's, it's funny, the wrestling analogy. I always say to kids, and this is the showing up, you're not just shooting at those legs, you're shooting straight through those legs right. and same thing when you've got a goal you got to shoot through that goal and get to the other side of it and that's that's the, the 10% I want to reference my, my new best friend who I haven't met yet Barry Hearn <laughs> <laughs> almost, every, almost every commentary I bring Barry in somehow um, <laughs> no no where, where, where Barry said there's a very simple formula for success and this is the other 10% 90% is showing up the 10% is being very clear in your focus and having a relentless work ethic so there you go I mean if you show up that's 90% what's the other 10% be very clear on what you want to do and go after it relentlessly every single day, no matter what. Now, what Peter would say is inform a great team around you too, which is mm-hmm. which is equally important. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, with that hey, said, having, we, got, we got a great team. We do. We have a fantastic <laughs> team here. If you want to see more of what our team's up to, if you want to see more great interviews with people like Barry Hearn, with people like Amelia Boone, with just dozens and dozens of incredible people out there, go to SpartanUpPodcast.com. We're also on iTunes. We're on YouTube. Subscribe, follow us, but most importantly, join the conversation. Tell us what you enjoy. Ask us more questions. We'll see what we can find out for you. Maybe even the guests will join in themselves. Thank you for watching another epic story of success. If you like our message, please share Spartan Up with your friends and subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, or wherever you catch our show, maybe in the woods. Spartan Up is brought to you by Spartan Race. To find a race near you, visit Spartan.com. <laughs>